Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast. This week, I'm excited to bring you part two of my conversation with Ian Robertson. Last time we dove into discussing off times and whether it was safe to exercise during wearing off times. This week, we're talking about techniques to improve turns, particularly while walking and other physical and functional activities, as well as breaking out of freezing episodes and uh, how Ian deals with that himself as well as what has triggered freezing episodes for him, which he suffers from on a just about daily basis. For access to the complete conversation without interruption, please consider joining any level of our channel memberships. If not, you'll definitely get the, the third installment of this in the next couple of weeks. So sit back and relax while that's on its way and being edited. But in the meantime, enjoy this installment. And without further ado, let's start the show. Welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Show, where we demystify the disease and empower you as the person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. The content contained on this show is for informational purposes only and is not meant to be a replacement for information or advice that you receive from your in-person medical or therapy professionals. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing and for an even more personalized experience, please ask us about our memberships. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. One of the things that I tell people, or what I tend to do in practice, is I always start with the better side, at least to give them an idea of what the best movement is possible that they can do. And then when we shift to the the more impaired side, I say, okay, I want you to do that as big as you did on the other side. Remember what that felt like and do it the same way. So you're doing a similar thing and you, in the sense that you are uh, having them practice on the less strong side, um, or I guess strong may not be the word, but the less, uh, the side that's less likely for them to choose. Yeah, so what, so like we noticed that in our goaltending schools when we ran is that most, most athletes will have a, a dominant side and we have to get rid of that dominant side. We gotta get it back. Yeah. And, yeah, there you uh, go. And most of them will work on their strengths, not their weaknesses. And, uh-huh. and uh, sort of relating it down to Parkinson's, okay, if we're in an athletic competition here against against Parkinson's, we got to make sure I can move to my left as well as my right. Absolutely. And then uh, when I was, uh, one thing we use, my wife is in, in, uh, the art world and when we went to art shows we always to try and set our booth up on the right hand side of the door because when mm-hmm. people come in through it 75 percent of them turn right <laughs> yeah so you know we it's the same thing for us we go through a door we got to be able to turn left if we have to yeah that's true that's absolutely true yeah turning is a whole nother issue we could go into um, it's a totally different, it's not a totally different topic, but it is, um, it kind of, it does kind of go into what we're talking about, I guess. Um, it, it, but it's the same principle. Like you said, turning right is the first tendency, but turning left is important to practice. Um, and so one of the things that can be a struggle with folks is turning, turning while walking or turning to sit, just as examples turning uh, the steps required while turning to open a refrigerator, a car door, something where you're having to step out of the way of what you're opening. That's um, something that you can do with what we do with in the LSVT, we do quarter turns. So we practice a quarter of a whole turn. So quarter turn to the right. T- typically the way I have someone do it is quarter turn to the stronger side, quarter turn to the center, quarter turn to the weaker side quarter turn to the center and then we do it five times each way and so yeah that and and that helps to break up the task of turning because no one turns in we do turn in 90 degree turns sometimes but we tend to turn in larger turn to radius um so if somebody has freezing or any issues with turning that can help to break to give them an idea of what to do if they're getting stuck while turning yeah, what uh, what I I've tried to do is that we've and we do it with we we did it with our goalies is to break it down in a sequence. 
What is the yep. sequence of movement? So what's going to lead our movement, if I'm going to my right, say, is to look first. Get my head turned. Then I get my upper body turned. Yep. And then, then your hips. Then my legs just fall. Yep. So, so if I'm standing, uh, like <clears> one, <throat> I got, I got my posture has to be there. My yep. knees have to. Uh, my hands got to be out front. And that's why I use my ball. Is that we would look, turn the ball, turn my hips. I'm there. Yeah. It's a matter of breaking it down. They're all in individual steps. There's a sequence to that movement. It may look uniform because if you do it fluidly, it looks as you're moving all at once. But they're right. all there's four or five individual steps involved in that movement. Yes, exactly. And and that's the exact principle I'm I'm mentioning in this is is breaking it up into a component. So that's exactly the same. Yeah. Because if we're if I'm going to, for example, if I come from this side to sit on this stool, I'm going to be turning towards you before I sit. That's a that's a really quick example of a quarter. Is I'm coming from one side and I'm sitting on a chair or a stool behind me. But we do that all the time. Every day we yeah. do it. So many times you don't even think about it. Going to the bathroom, um, going to sit on the couch, going to sit on the recliner, going to sit in the, well, the car isn't quite as good of an example because there's a little more movement involved there, but you get what I'm saying. And so that is, but even doing that one quarter turn, um, it's a component of larger turns that happen in movement. So. Um, that principle plays out in in exactly the same way in everyday life, even outside of sports. Refer to, to it as I don't want your hands to be an anchor. So if I if yeah. my hands if I start my lower body before I turn my upper body, my upper body is resisting, and it's harder to make that turn. So it's here yep. here. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, that's exactly right. And it's and so to give you an example of how to you were talking about fluid movement versus segmented movement, basically. Um, and that's how we would put it together is when we practice during a session, it's quarters. Left center, right center and so forth. But to put it all together, we practice in functional movements. So Stand, and this is just a quick example, but there's a test we use called the timed up and go, and that can be a good way to practice turns while walking and turns before sitting. So you stand up from a chair, walk 10 feet or um, uh, three meters, turn around, come back to the chair and sit. So that involves two turns and a sit to stand and a stand to sit transfer. Yeah. But so, what, Michael, I'd like to mention is that when we do, do lead with our eyes, though, Yes. Uh, our, that, that engages our ears. Our eyes and ears work together, and that helps our balance issue. If we don't have yes. the proper connection, we don't get the, the proper uh, the vestibular system working yes. properly. Yeah, you and, need that and, feedback. That's right. And so that's why everything we do is a, so we use restress, look first. And so it's look, move, think. So what I'll do is I say, I'll use a square. So here's our brain, here's our eyes, here's our, our physical stuff, and here's our communication stuff. So it's all stop, start, stop, stop, like a quarter, like you were talking yeah. about. Eventually, as we move, we now go, oh, I can put a sort of an access road here. <laughs> so instead right. of moving square, I can just sort of make a little loop. It becomes and a curve. Thing, yeah. And so as you progress, this no longer a square, it becomes the circle. And it looks like you're moving really fluid, but you're still paying the, the principles of the square. You're just using them all sort of compacted together to make it look more fluid. Yeah. And and yeah, definitely going to our first conversation, that was something that, that really was important to recall and to emphasize is that, 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 uh, my involvement in the exercises and the movements that you're doing to help the whole system to work together. So that was a good point uh, that you brought up several months ago. 
the way I understand it, if you can get those four systems working, the better I see, the better I can think. The better I think, the better I can, I can move. Like the, all those topics are, are interchangeable. They, they get provide feedback. And so if I can move really good, but I can now see it, and I'm not talking like 2020 vision. I'm just talking about how I can read the openings. Like, hey, there's, a, there's an escape route for me. And taking yeah. that, you know, it's uh, the more I can use those four elements together, the better I have an understanding of them, the better I'll be able to see. Like, the better I move and I think, then I can think of better ideas that I can maybe implement when I do those things. Mm -hmm. But if I if I use them all just as individuals, that's I'm not going to learn as much. Does that make sense? To, I don't know if I explained it that well. <laughs> it makes sense to me. Um, I think it'll make sense to anybody watching or listening. Um, but yeah, so. A question I had for you to piggyback on that and also based on what you had talked about potentially bringing up today, do you have, do you experience freezing episodes on a uh, regular basis? Yes. Okay. Now for you individually, what would you say is a, a and there are some common triggers, but there are some unique ones to people I feel like as well. So is there something specifically you feel like triggers it for you? Mental self-talk. Uh, uh, sort of like when I'm stuttering or, or to stop or I'm, I'm uh, hesitant to start, I'll break it down as to, okay, take a breath, relax. You know what to do, just do it. This sort of thing, like, you know. And, yeah. And be, and so I more uh, instruct struck myself as to as to what use so as to whether there's visual cues that are in the house or abroad uh, sometimes uh the one situation i had really bad was we were at a, our local arena and they had their stairs all painted black oh. and i was up at the top <laughs> no contrast it okay it looked like a giant slide from the top uh -huh. And I was going, oh God, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but you, 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 oh. it, with all the hand, hand of attack, like we were talking about before, and you do it nice and slow. And then I got down there, and boy, was I relieved when I did get down there. <laughs> it looked like a giant slide. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, is it, did, did they at least have rails um, on one side or something? Yes, and that's what saved me. I was going to say, you probably were hanging on pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going, I uh, wasn't going down frontwards. I was going down laterally, shall we say. <laughs> I was just about to say, I could I could envision that kind of that side, side winding kind of movement. It was, were there gaps between at any points? No, Sometimes. not on the handrail. Good. I, I was, I was, because I, I feel like at some places where there are, either at uh, sports stadiums and sometimes in, um, in, in in venues such as arenas or um, civic centers, things like that. I feel like once in a while there are gaps between, well, I guess maybe that's because there's small landings in between sometimes, um, like between levels. I guess I could see that making sense. But I, but yeah, it sounds like this was one giant staircase. Well, it, it's just our local arena, so we're, we're only talking about probably 10, 12 flights up so you know there's yeah. no reason to to disjoin the sections there yeah yeah but it, again it's a situation where we talked about before where you know i never prepared for it because i never thought about it and yet exactly. i wanted to be out in the world i want to i want to live my life i want to be out and about and uh and i was out and about and i got caught mm. and uh, okay what do i do to get out of this well, and it's interesting the way you responded because I, I um, it, it almost was the inverse of what I was asking because I think you you went into tr to techniques to break out of it and then talked about triggers <laughs> or one or one trigger was the stairs, but it sounds like in that case it was a visual visual spatial trigger um, that kind yeah. of locked you up a little bit. 
is there anything else you can think of in daily life that kind of is like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm stuck. You know, it, it causes you to get stuck. Not necessarily that I, that I can recall offhand. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with with my uh, my upbringing. Shall we say? Like uh, I'm fairly positive. Uh, I know I can <laughs> do things. With my Parkinson's, I probably shouldn't be doing. <laughs> like <laughs> like when we when we went rowing, I I'm willing to pay the price to have five really good days and two really crappy days. Yeah, you know, and uh, that one really good day we had uh, rowing, that was broken up into hours where you know I had an hour and a half really good hours, and I had a half hour of pure hell. You know, and then then you, you you work your way through it, and and I think that's for us to be able to enjoy our life and live an active life, we have to learn how to disengage or transition, I guess, how, from an on to an off, and, and from an off to an on. And yeah, like, uh, and uh, that's again another sports metaphor for, for I when I with my Parkinson's, I have extensive tactics that I want to try and push it away. And I want to have defensive tactics where it's stronger. How do I how do I cope with it? And then there's the, the transitions, the ons and off. And most of my experience with my Parkinson's, it's transitioning. Like, you know, I'm on, yeah. on for an hour and a half, I'm off for a half hour, I'm on for a half hour, I'm off for, you know, it it's fluctuates during my day. Yeah. And, uh, so it's just a matter of, I, I try and plan my exercises so that it'll help me uh, handle those situations. And so not a lot of, in my exercises, not a, I wouldn't say there's a lot of high intensity, but it depends on the day. Like, and my, yeah. and my feeling. like sometimes going out for a walk to get the mail, that's just a leisurely stroll. And sometimes that's a high intensity workout. <laughs> I want to thank you all again. If you're all the way to the end of the video for thanks for watching all the way through to the end. Um, I did want to say that uh, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. Please uh, leave your comments and questions for myself or Ian. And also please consider um, giving feedback on what guests you'd like to see potentially interviewed here on the channel. Well, I'm going to let you go for now, but until next time, be empowered, and don't forget to get your shirt to let other people know that they should be empowered too.